Hello everyone. I am Nidhi Mishra. Welcome you to the class of Indian Society. So, uh, um, in our lecture, we have already discussed uh, uh, two, three important topics in our last class. And today, in that progression only, we are going to uh, talk on a very another important section of your uh, syllabus. That is, uh, we are going to talk on uh, social dimensions of population. Right. So in this, we are going to understand that uh, uh, all the demographic issues. Right. So what are the uh, demographic issues and uh, how do we understand it in the context of our society? <clears throat> so uh, moving uh, further, uh, demography is a Greek word. Right. Demos. Demos and graphy. So demos means people and graphy means study. So the study of people or the study of population is known as, is, uh, uh, is called as demography, right? A very, uh, the moment we talk about demography, uh, a very eminent uh, personality in this field, uh, uh, most of us uh, specifically uh, belonging to the field of economics or even to the field of humanities, they must have heard about the name uh, Robert Malthus. So the theory of Robert Malthus is very, very important, you know, because he has only talked about uh, the growth of population and he has tried to understand uh, understand population in terms of the resources available and uh, he says that robert malthus whose theory is called as malthusian theory so he says uh, that uh, uh, you know uh, he, he gives two terms geometric uh, progression and arithmetic progression so he says that uh, our population grows or you can say population multiplies in geometric progression it, and whereas the resources available to us, the food, the agricultural production available to us grows in arithmetic progression. So when I say geometric progression, what does it mean? Two into four, four into two, eight. So it uh, population increases in geometric progression. It multiplies. So when it is multiplication, it, the, the growth is very, very fast. And the food production, the agricultural production, the subsistence level on which we subsist ourselves, on which we sustain ourselves, the resources, it is very limited uh, as compared to the population and it grows in arithmetic progression. Right, it grows in arithmetic progression two plus two, four plus two, six in this way. Right, so uh, this uh, um, a very um, simple term or very simple concept of understanding population growth is given by uh, Robert Malthus, that is Malthusian theory, and where he says that human population tends to grow at much. Uh, faster rate than the rate at which the means of production or the means of subsistence you know grows so he says that population grows at much faster rate so um, and then further he says that why um, when he has given his um, you know, theory uh, in that he has actually talked about that why it is so that why population grows so faster and why the uh, subsistence level is uh, comparatively so low so he says that there are limited scopes and limited uh, uh, options available for or to check the population growth Right, so he has actually talked about preventive check and positive check. So he says that preventive checks are like delaying the marriage age. You know, what are you, you are taking up the preventive measures to, um, uh, you know, to uh, curtail the population growth or to slow, uh, slow down the uh, growth of uh, uh, population or the progression of population. Whereas positive checks, are those checks which are actually, um, uh, you can say, uh, uh, natural calamities uh, such as uh, tsunami or even famine, you know, such kind of or even avalanches. So these are natural ways, na nature's way of controlling population that is positive check. And preventive checks, on the other hand, are delaying marriages, contraceptions, use of contraception, so on and so forth. So as the technology advanced, as the education grew, as the society started, you know, moving towards urbanization, that will take up in another class, uh, the issue of urbanization. So uh, society started using preventive measures 
to check its population growth. Right? It, it, it does not only depend upon positive checks. So it started, that is why you know, the various government policies are also based upon preventive checks. Okay, so uh, this is the very simpler term of uh, uh, population growth given by um, uh, famous uh, economist, famous sociologist, you can say socioeconomist who has talked about population growth. So um, you can corroborate the present uh, uh, data also, but at present, you know, if we take talk about uh, 2011 census, then um, 133.92 crore, uh, you know, um, was the population uh, uh, as compared to 2011 data, but it has uh, increased also, which can be uh, corroborated here. But the point, the concept here is to understand and which we'll further discuss that, um, uh, you know, uh, as uh, the marriage age for girls was also in news and you can expect a question on this, you know, on the, um, uh, on the, increasing the legal marriage age for girls and what are the issues and how it would impact the Indian society that you can expect one question. So um, this is what, uh, you know, uh, you have to understand that um, first and foremost, the very basic concept that population actually grows as, at a very faster rate. That is on, uh, it multiplies very fast, whereas the subsistence level, it actually grows relatively slower and it, it, it increases in arithmetic progression, right? So that is what you need to understand. Now, the point here further is to understand that what are the determinants of population change? So um, what are the factors? You know, what are the factors that, that actually uh, affects population uh, change or the population dimensions, the demographic dimensions of our society? So obviously, fertility rate is one. Another is mortality rate right, uh, uh, maternal mortality rate and infant mortality rate, then migration. So these, these are the terms, key terms, which you have to remember that what are the factors that leads to population change. So for fertility rate, obviously fertility rate is what it is one of the measure or measurement of uh, or a scale on which you actually measure the fertility rate. You know, the fertility rate is what? So it refers to number of live birth per thousand women. So fertility rate is uh, a number of live birth uh, per thousand women in the childbearing age capacity, in the childbearing age, you know, in the reproductive age, which you say. So number of fertility rate is number of child a woman bears in her uh, childbearing or reproductive age. And what is reproductive age? The reproductive age is considered 15 to 49 years of age. The reproductive age is considered 15 to 49 years of age. So uh, uh, average uh, woman uh, bears, uh, you know, the number of child and, and average woman bears in her uh, reproductive age, that is 15 to 49 years, is what that is what we understand. That is how we understand fertility rate, right? Now, crude birth rate in the same way, another important term, uh, crude birth rate is number of live birth, crude birth rate. So number of live birth, uh, uh, birth during a year, uh, uh, which is considered as uh, in a calendar year, which is uh, taken as crude birth rate. Now, there are certain limitations of, you know, such kinds of uh, measurement, right? Uh, for example, um, when you talk about um, uh, crude birth rate, then the limitation is it had uh, it, its denomination is total population in the middle of the year. So uh, the, the basic formula for calculating crude birth rate is the total number of live birth in a year divided by total population in middle in middle of the year. Uh, multiplies 1000. So there are certain limitations, you know, on the basis of crude birth rate, exact population dimension or exact um, scale of uh, a change of population cannot be actually uh, uh, determined. And it is, it is actually one of the factors which measures the uh, measures, uh, give measurement of very young population. So that can't be, you know, uh, a very reliable uh, factor, right? So there has been change, change in the trend. That is, then we move towards birth rate, you know, another dimension which we started looking into, uh, into birth rate. So birth rate, actually, we started calculating largely um, 
uh, um, you know, when the, since from the census started and uh, uh, the pattern has been seen that uh, post 1961, you know, birth rate has started declining. Though the decline was slow, the birth rate, the decline was slow in, uh, since 1961, but it started declining. So when I say it started declining, so what are the factors which led to, you know, uh, decline in the birth rate? So one can understand that with the progression, with the progress of society, Society, with the advancement of society, with the advancement of education and technological advancement, with awareness, people started understanding that uh, our resources and agricultural resources and the level of subsistence is limited for us and therefore they started using preventive checks also to control the population growth. Right? And obviously the uh, improvement in the um, health uh, sector, improvement in the uh, health faci healthcare facilities that, ha that has all, um, you know, led to, um, led, led to, you know, betterment of life and also um, uh, with the advancement of education, uh, with the awareness among the people, uh, the birth rate has gradually started declining. It has started coming down. Now, if we talk about fertility uh, rate, you know, then uh, we'll further see that what are the factors which are actually important uh, to understand that which has led to population growth. Or you can see what are the factors which are important for high fertility rate, high fertility rate. Right. So uh, if we talk about the factors responsible or the determinants of high fertility um, in our uh, country, then you can say the first and foremost is the religion. So religion uh, is the one which actually supports or it's backed up by high fertility. Uh, you know, it um, some of the religion which actually, um, uh, 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 you know, puts more uh, pressure or you can say um, among the uh, uh, among the couples to bear more and more children and also because of uh, uh, expectation of a son in the expectation of a son a family a, uh, a couple bears more number of children so and when i say that religion there are certain practices you know which are foregrounded which are so strong in our society that uh, which says that some of the practices some of the uh, uh, religious practices can only be performed by son so because of that also because of such kind of perspective and such kind of uh, you know notion or norms in our society religion actually has a backup or it supports the uh, uh, number of uh, you know, more number of children enough in a family and in a way it actually gives rise to high fertility another is major um, marriage is the major factor um, you know uh, though there has been uh, moves in our society right from prohibition of child marriage act but still um, the uh, evidences of child marriage are very much uh, you know prevalent in our country so marriage is yet another factor which increases high, which leads to high fertility. Now, when we say marriage, so it was in news, uh, you know, uh, very much uh, these days that um, increasing the legal marriage age of uh, girls from 18 to 21 years. So you can expect one question on it, right? Which we'll be uh, discussing further. Then uh, a son, uh, the concept son meta preference. The concept son meta preference is, uh, um, you know, has been uh, talked about and it's, uh, it was a, uh, um, uh, uh, it's it's a very important uh, uh, factor which leads to high fertility um, uh, rate or growth of um, uh, growth of population in India. And what is that? Sun meta preference. So sun meta preference is again giving preference to uh, to the to sons in our family having more number of sons or in the expectation of sons. We uh, woman uh, actually keeps on bearing. Uh, a girl child, right? So, uh, and, uh, related to this only, a very important concept has, was given by Amartya Sen, the concept of missing girls. He says that in expectation of sons, uh, uh, more number of girls are born and they are not being taken proper care of. So, it gives rise to the concept of missing girls. So, son meta preference and missing girl concept is very important to understand high fertility. 
you know, the rise of population in India, right? So, um, Sun Meta Preference, yet another is conception of control method, the method of uh, controlling method, con con use of contraception. Through various researches, it has been found that the contraceptive measures are largely being used by women only. Right, a uh, very um, a few percentage of uh, men they uh, use contraceptive methods. So such kinds of uh, um, biased notion and practices also leads to high fertility. Then obviously poverty. Poverty is a very important factor. So when we say poverty, so poverty, uh, you know, uh, poor uh, population or poor people tend to have more number of children because they consider that when they have more hands, so they have more hands to work and more hands to earn. So in, with that expectation, they keep increasing their family and they keep bearing, um, uh, 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 keep expecting child and they keep bearing um, child in their reproductive, wom woman in their reproductive age, right? But here we can also understand in this way that because of lack of population, because of lack of um, employment, because of, uh, you know, a poor economic condition, girls even don't have, or women even don't have their reproductive right. When we say reproductive right, so right, reproductive right means what? That women does not have any, uh, does not have much control over, uh, over the children or over the child which she bears in her reproductive age, right? So whether she is happy bearing the child or not happy, that right is not given to women, right? So reproductive rights are also limited. It is actually being uh, controlled by the head of the family or the husbands, right? So now what are the implications of high fertility? Since we talked about the factors leading to high fertility, what are the implications of high fertility? Obviously, women are more into child rearing and child bearing practices. So in a way it leads to gender inequality in our society. Right? Women are more into the work of drudgery, into the work of routine work of uh, childbearing practices. Right? Another, it affects the health of a woman. You know, right from a very early age, they are bearing, uh, they are bearing um, children. So it, uh, uh, so um, it also affects their health. You know, most most of the women, specifically uh, women in uh, rural in India. You know, they are anemic. They suffer from a lower level of uh, iron in their uh, blood and they are anemic. So why is this is so? Because the proper attention and proper care is not being given to them and they are more into reproductive life and childbearing practices. So it affects the health of mother as well as it affects the health of children. When mother is not healthy, when mother is not in a proper condition, obviously the children would not be. No. So mothers are uh, pivotal in any family, right? They are the one from where children get the strength. So another factor is it adds more and more economic burden on the family, right? So economic and emotional well-being of a family is at the uh, uh, is also threatened because of number of uh, more children in the family. When you are uh, living in a, a, a poor economic condition, it leads to Delinquency among children, it also adds a, a lot of a strife and violent violence in the family. Um, um, uh, men also tend uh, to get involved in uh, uh, unlawful activities. So uh, such kind of factors also leads to uh, uh, economic uh, burden and also uh, it uh, threatens the emotional well-being of a family. Right, so uh, more number of children in a family in also gives rise to what very important and very serious uh, factor or a very serious concern we can say the the concern of child labor. So child labor it gives rise to uh, you know high fertility gives rise to child labor. Children small children are found to be uh, working on uh, dhabas on eta uh, bhatti you know bricks bhatti where the bricks are being made. So they are found uh, working there with their uh, parents from the age you can see, we can turn on the pages of NCRT and you'll see a very good case study is given on, uh, you know, Bricklin. So on Bricklin, uh, how children, small children of uh, six and seven years of age, they 
uh, during night time, they assist their parents in uh, carrying the loads of bricks. Right. So why they at night time? Because during daytime, uh, they cannot uh, take help of their children uh, because of um, uh, child labor act, prohibition of child labor act, and uh, that is very uh, you know they if they are caught they will be uh, behind the bars. So be fearing those factors, and even the um, uh, the owners of the brick clean also they um, they ask the children the young children uh, to help or to assist their parents during night time. So it gives high fertility actually gives rise to um, child labor. Then obviously, um, when it is when it gives rise to child labor, when there is a, um, when a family faces economic hardship, then the, um, uh, the child is, uh, is, um, uh, you know, uh, does not gain the opportunity to go to school. So he lacks, he or she lacks the opportunity to go to school. So that opportunity of attending a school and getting education is also snatched away, right? So uh, the concept of uh, childhood, childhood is absolutely lost. There is no concept of childhood. What is, when I say concept of childhood, childhood means uh, where uh, you are free from your responsibilities, where you are, you know, in your own world of imaginations and dreams, where you are, um, uh, you know, when you do not uh, bother uh, to think about future, you are actually living in present and you are in a very playful mode. So that kind of concept is actually being snatched away from those children who are found to be working day and night on uh, as a child labor. Right? So these are the issues which actually threatens, which are very, very important implications of high fertility and we need to understand. Now, <clears throat> another important concept I would like to uh, you know, discuss here, um, that is maternal mortality rate, right? Mortality rate, mortality, mortal, uh, mortality means death. So death, death rate. So maternal mortality rate and infant mortality rate. So mater, maternal mortal, mortality rate is what? Maternal mortality rate is uh, death of uh, uh, babies. Uh, sorry, infant mortality is death of babies uh, within the age of one year. So within the age of uh, one year uh, or first uh, um, uh, four weeks of uh, baby lives are uh, considered important in calculating infant mortality rate. Now maternal mortality rate, maternal is mother. So you know, death of mothers, you know, while giving birth. So death, the uh, number of uh, women uh, dying in uh, childbirth per thousand live birth is what is actually uh, uh, maternal mortality rate. Now, other than this, uh, what I am talking about is, uh, which was in uh, news again, is the replacement level. You know, that um, what is the replacement level and uh, how exactly uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the one generation is replacing the other. Right. So uh, replacement level, uh, which was in news recently, which uh, uh, in India, which has actually been uh, 2.1, you know, in India, 2.1 is the replacement level or the replacement fertility level, which we say. And the replacement fertility level is the level of fertility or the level of population that exactly replaces the another generation. For example, if you say that in last generation, a couple uh, in, in the present generation, a couple is having two child, uh, you know, um, uh, if they are having uh, two children, a couple is having two children. And in the last generation also, in the, uh, in the last generation also, they, they um, you know, their um, uh, parents, right, they had two children. And in present generation also, the, if they are having two children, then, the, then it's equal replacement level. You know, equally, the first generation is replacing the another generation. So that is what is, you know, how much um, higher the replacement level, then that means um, uh, that means uh, higher the fertility um, uh, rate in India or higher the fertility rate in any country. So present at present, uh, India is having 2.1, you know, 2.1 children per woman. Uh, you know, on an average 2.1 children per woman is bearing, 
uh, uh, 2.1 children per woman is bearing in her child bearing age you know or in her reproductive age so this replacement level is also important to understand because it was in news right so um, other than this um, uh, you know replacement level and uh, understanding maternal maternal mortality why i am discussing because uh, these are the indicators or uh, indicators of good health of uh, of any society so on the basis of sex ratio on the basis of um, uh, infant mortality rate on the basis of maternal mortality mortality rate or birth rate uh, these are the indicators of a healthy society if these indicators are uh, you know less if they are if the percentages are less for example if the percentage of maternal mortality is less that means the health of a woman is good in a society right in the same way if the fertility rate is also coming down that means that woman is uh, not only focused on the reproductive uh, capacities um, uh, but at the same time having some another responsibilities or having some another important work as well so these are the indicators of a uh, healthy uh, society you can say right so <clears throat> so now uh, moving further another important con concept is the concept of life expectancy so you can you know uh, understand that with the advancement of society with the advancement of technology with the technological advancement and education the life expectancy obviously is increasing you know it's increasing because people are having better healthcare facilities so uh, diseases are also coming down but <clears throat> but in present uh, covid time you can understand that um, you can get a question that how the covid how the pandemic covid 19 has impacted the demographic structure of our society how it has impacted the demographic structure of our society so when i talk about demographic structure you have to understand one very important because you um, understand it in a, a triangle shape in a triangular shape right in a pyramid so a pyramid why because the topmost population is um, uh, you know the uh, topmost population population is the aging population in the middle it is the young population and at the base is the um, uh, middle is the young population is the working population working age population and at the bottom it is the dependent population the child the children you know the more uh, the number of children it shows so in that um, how this pandemic covid 19 has uh, affected the demographic structure of our society is yet another question which you can expect you know that which level has been uh, uh, more uh, you know more affected for example the geriatric population of our country uh, and the dependent population which we say dependent population geriatric population and young children till the age of 15 years 0 to 15 years of children and uh, uh, above the retirement age you know above 65 years of age these children are considered as, uh, these populations are considered as dependent population right so dependent population means they are dependent upon the working age population so this covid pandemic has especially targeted uh, uh, the geriatric population and it has affected also our um, a uh, demographic structure as well right so you will have to understand it in different ways the way covid pandemic you know uh, the onset of covid pan covid 19 pandemic and then the first wave and then the second wave right and the third wave so you have to understand it in this way that which population was being largely affected and how was our healthcare facility right so uh, moving further uh, when we talk about the population of india the, we undoubtedly we have a, a large proportion of young population working age population so the, the, which is called as demographic dividend dividend is what it is the benefit so india has the benefit of our demography of our demography demography means of our population and what is that benefit what is that dividend it's that we have more proportion of working age population right so what is the working age population it is 15 to 64 years or is of uh, working age population right so uh, uh, and this is um, uh, you know is actually the demographic dividend and dividend is the benefit that 
Um, uh, when we say that it is the benefit, that means if we have more younger population, then we will have more economic progress. We'll have more chances of technology, more chances of advancement of our society, right? So, but the point is we need to channelize this demographic dividend. We need to uh, reap the benefit of this demographic dividend. And we can only reap the benef benefit of this demographic dividend through better education facility, through better health facility, right? So through uh, various uh, legal measures, various uh, uh, governmental policies, which actually leads to skill development, employment generation. So these are the factors which we will enhance and which we will make uh, our uh, young population, our working age population, more and more competent in our society, right? So we have to reap the benefit of our demographic dividend, right? And this is very, very important. When we say demographic dividend, then that means that we have less burden you know, we have more less number of dependent population and we have more number of working age population, right? Uh, so um, now we have, uh, uh, if we talk about the governmental measures or policies, then national population policy was there in 1952. It came in, uh, came during a national emergency, but has a lot of, it's, it has suffered uh, various setbacks. And it was um, uh, further the name of national population policy was changed as national family welfare program or national population pop, um, population policy which in at present context 2000 right now uh, the factors which are important for uh, what are the factors you can get in question that what are the factors for uh, responsible for population growth then first we have largely discussed then we have a high birth rate and high death rate high birth rate and uh, high death rate, then low marriage age or uh, the practices of uh, child marriages, higher, um, uh, higher level of illiteracy, that more number of illiterate population, they are guided by religious notions. Uh, 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 when they are, um, and they are economically not uh, independent. So uh, such are the factors, high illiteracy in a way leads to uh, more population growth. Religious attitude towards family planning is very, very narrow and restrictive. Uh, they, uh, they believe in bearing more and more number of children. Then poverty, obviously. Uh, poor people, they think that we have more number of hands to earn because more number of hands to work on field or to earn. So uh, poverty is yet another important factor for uh, causes of uh, population growth. Then uh, <clears throat> a lower level of use of, uh, of uh, um, uh, contraceptive measures or to control fertility. Right, and obviously migration. Migration is also a very important factor of population growth, or which actually affects the demographic structure. You know, uh, because um, you know, uh, illegal migration actually affects the uh, demographic structure of the of any country. So uh, these are the factors, more or less six, seven factors, which actually affects the uh, population growth. What are the implications of population growth? Unemployment. You know, um, more number of uh, people um, uh, dependent on uh, on our uh, you know economy, or uh, more uh, more and more uh, less people earning, and more or more people are a percentage of level people are dependent. Uh, then it adds a burden on infrastructure, right? Because uh, uh, um, you have more people to feed. Then uh, migration of people from uh, rural to urban area. So uh, urbanization is yet another, you know, uh, uh, unplanned urbanization is, is another problem. So migration from rural area to urban area, or you can say uh, imbalanced growth of uh, development or imba imbalanced development. One state is um, much developed, developed as compared to another. So uh, this is yet this is another implication. Then employment and poverty leads to frustration and anger among educated youth. So this leads to illegal activities. They are more into, uh, you know, more and more percentage you'll find into human trafficking, child labor, uh, delinquent population, uh, and uh, delinquent children, and uh, in robbery. So cheating. So such kind of activities, unwanted activities increases in our society. This is important implication, right? 
So uh, uh, for population, you need to understand that what are the causes of population growth and what are the uh, what are the implications you know and how is the uh, how is how our socio cultural practices are also responsible for population growth right socio cultural practices so when you talk about socio cultural practices that you need to talk about religion in that you need to talk about cultural practices which we for example you know at the time of death uh, as per our religion it is considered that the last rite is being performed by the sons of the family so such kind of cultural practices norms which are backed by religion uh, these are the practices which actually leads to more number more expectation towards uh, you know, son in the family, and therefore, in that expectation, a child keeps bearing girl child, right? Which also leads to the concept of missing girls, uh, given by Amartya Sen, right? So, um, and another important implication of uh, growing population is urbanization. The problem of uh, urbanization or unplanned urbanization. There is more pressure on land. There is more pressure on resources. So, fragmentation of uh, land. Uh, environmental degradation, you know, um, uh, as there is more and more pressure on land, so people start exploiting their limited resources. So this is this also this affects adversely affects the climate. So environmental degradation, then um, uh, uh, the, the limited uh, resources leads to a lot of uh, conflicts in the society. So in a way, it leads to uh, uh, strives in the society. So these are the factors which actually uh, affects the uh, uh, the uh, the health of our society. So uh, these are the implications of growing population. Right. So uh, this is what uh, you know. You need to understand in the concept of population. So what are the measures? How do you control population? What are the measures which are important? So social measures you know, uh, political measures, economic measures. So when you talk about social me uh, measures, then obviously awareness, through awareness and advertisement, you need to create a stir in the population, especially the uh, the illiterate population. So you need to create their, um, uh, you need to create a stir there and need to change their mindset and perspective. So social measures are there, economic measures are there, and political will is also there to control the measure. Social measures, awareness, education, women empowerment, and health benefit, contraceptive measures one has to, uh, uh, you know, uh, society needs to adopt contraceptive measures, both when I say society, that means both men and women, they have to, uh, you know, uh, go towards contraceptive, uh, adopt contraceptive measures. So these are the social uh, social measures which can be taken up. Then political or uh, schemes, there are various schemes, for example, Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao scheme. So um, uh, when such kind of schemes are actually popular, then people start spending on their, uh, start spending and uh, saving on a girl child. So such kind of um, initiatives are very, very important. Then economic benefit, economic measures to control population growth. Development is one of the more foremost uh, factor. If the, if a society develops in a balanced way, then it controls, it checks the uh, uncontrolled uh, population growth as well, right? So you need to understand that uh, you know India actually follows the welfareist uh, policy or welfare welfare uh, uh, welfareist approach. So when we say welfareist approach, then uh, it talks about you know taking um, uh, care of the marginalized section of our society, the poor population, the women, and therefore they have um, integrative kind of approach or active participation. So our government seeks participation from various. Um, uh, you know, non-governmental organizations, and as well as it also uh, spends a lot of um, uh, 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 money and la larger proportion on uh, marginalized section of our society. Provides, um, just like you, for example, you can say berojgari bhatta unemployment uh, bhatta, which the government gives. So such are the measures, you know, which government actually uh, tries to um, take care of those population who are poor and who are unemployed and who are kind of dependent on our society. So uh, this is uh, yet another, uh, you know, uh, issue. Then another, which I was talking about, uh, the question which you can get is the uh, is on uh, minimum legal age. Uh, 
uh, of children of a girl uh, lower uh, which is uh, which was in news these days and increasing the minimum legal age of marriage uh, which is to be increased from 18 to 21 years and what are the benefits of this you can you need to understand both the benefits the the pros and cons of this you know a kind of um, a critical perspective also you can have on this but the the benefit the uh, larger benefit which appears is the means of uh, it, it is one of the major means of lowering the uh, maternal mortality and improving nutritional levels among girls and women. So where, with increasing a legal age of marriage from to 18 to 21, it is expected that the marriage, that the uh, girl would not be managed at a young age. It will also uh, you know, help in uh, bringing down the uh, practices of child marriage. Uh, though we have already enacted the Child Marriage Prohibition Act, Right. But uh, despite that, we see uh, the percentage of child marriage, the prevalence of child marriage is still there, specifically in some of the states of um, uh, Rajasthan, uh, you know, where we see the practices of child marriage is still very much prevalent. So um, uh, with the, the um, increasing the marriageable age of girls. It will take care of the maternal mortality, and it will also it will also improve the the education level of women girls, and also it will at the same time it will also take care of the population growth. Second, it will also take care of the nutrition level of the girls. You know that uh, they will have more expanse of their um, life on spent on education along with their parents, right? So they will be under the custody of their parents, and the parents, because of uh, various governmental policies, the parents would be uh, sending their girls to the to schools. So in a way, it will enhance their education and it will also take care uh, of their nutritional level. So in consonance with the SDG, Sustainable Development Goal, which is, you know, in that one of the targets or the key target is to eliminate child labor. So in, in, in uh, 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 you can say uh, in consonance with that, the increasing the legal age for uh, legal age of marriage for girls is quite beneficial for the society. Another important critical perspective, you can also take that uh, how um, it may also, you know, um, may not be, uh, you know, the other side, the pros and the cons. So, so, so the negative would be that the child, uh, a girl may not have, you know, uh, in our uh, society, which is still uh, a larger number of uh, poor population is there and in that uh, in such kind of uh, you know society what happens or in such uh, setup a, a girl is for a longer duration of time it is de she's dependent upon her parents right so uh, she may not have the uh, freedom to exercise her will you know so these this is one important factor which can be taken up as a as you can say uh, that, uh, you know, uh, as a negative of that uh, measure, but larger, if you see in the larger context, then it has larger benefit that it is, yes, going to uh, improve the education level and the nutritional level, and also it will take care of the maternal mortality, mortality rate, the, the anemic population of women would come down. Right. So this is one important um, issue which can you can expect one question on it because it was a news these days. So with this, I end the class here. I'll come up with another topic. Thank you so much.